Hi Space Cats, welcome back to my channel. It's finally Mars Month. Six months ago we saw three space agency launch missions to Mars. The United Arab Emirates sent their first mission to Mars, Hope and Orbiter. China's CNSA sent TM11 consisting of an orbiter, lander and rover and the US's NASA sent Perseverance rover and helicopter which I made a video on previously and you should really check it out if you haven't already. This is the month that they will arrive at their destination to Mars. So in this week's video, let's talk about the journey to Mars. As you may know, it can take between six and nine months to get to Mars. And this is because even though in most pictures of planets we see them all nice and aligned, the reality of it is that planets are almost never like this. They could be anywhere in their orbits. At its closest distance, Mars is just 55 million kilometres away. But at its furthest separation, Mars could be four times this, 201 million kilometres away. Getting to Mars using the shortest route can make huge amounts of savings given that it costs about $3,000 to send one kilogram of payload to space. A small rocket like Orion would require 700,000 kilograms of fuel. That's already $200 million. It's no wonder that space agencies were rushing to get their launch on time last year because otherwise a missed launch window could mean the choice between traveling a longer distance and hence requiring more fuel or putting the spacecraft back into storage, both of which would be expensive. Earth-Mars transfer trajectory is the orbital path which a spacecraft follows to travel between Earth and Mars. The most common Earth-Mars transfer trajectory is the Hohmann transfer, where the spacecraft starts in a circular orbit with the Earth, then transfer burns are used to get the spacecraft into an elliptical orbit that intersects both the departure and target locations. We need to make sure that Mars is in place, in location, for the transfer orbit to work. And that means the spacecraft needs to be launched at a very specific time. And this is the launch window. It could be weeks long or even months long. If a spacecraft is launched too early or even too late, it might arrive in Mars' orbit when Mars is not there. But if launched at the right time, the spacecraft will arrive in the orbit just as Mars arrives at the same place. This sets up the spacecraft in the right position to either go into orbit around Mars or to land. All of our three missions have been traveling in a home and transfer orbit, but now they're going to be doing different things. Hope, the Emirates mission, is led by a 80% woman team kudos to them. It's an orbiter mission, so it needs to get into an orbit around Mars. To do this, it needs to slow down. Nearly half of the fuel is used to slow the spacecraft down, so much so that it can be captured by Mars's gravity. The thrusters burn for 30 whole minutes to reduce the speed of 121,000 kilometers per hour down to about 18,000 kilometers per hour. And since there's a long delay between signals between Earth and Mars, this is typically between 13 and 26 minutes, the entire operation is done autonomously. Immediately after, the spacecraft will be eclipsed by Mars too, so it will be a little while more where the world will have to wait in anticipation for the big OK. CNSA's TM11 mission is carrying a rover. After entering orbit, it will need to prepare for a landing attempt of the 240 kilogram vehicle. The orbiter will begin imaging the main candidate landing site within the huge impact basin Utopia Planitia to the south of NASA's Viking 2 landing site. China's first attempt to Mars was an orbiter Yinghua 1 with the Russian space agency and their orbiter Phobos Grunt in 2011. But unfortunately, this mission failed and never even left Earth's orbit. 
So technically, this will be the real first time that China have sent anything to Mars, let alone landing on the surface. NASA caused the landing the seven minutes of terror. So Tianwen One will be planning the landing to ensure it all goes smoothly. It won't be landing there until May. <music> Lastly, NASA, who have already acquired four Mars landing successes, will touch down their Perseverance rover and helicopter on February the 18th. The rover will plunge through the Martian atmosphere at 12,000 miles per hour. If the heat shields hold up, they will be enduring temperatures of up to 2,100 degrees Celsius. To slow it down even further, a parachute will then be deployed, reducing the speed to just 2 miles per hour before a large sky crane will lower the rover to a soft landing on its six wheels in the Jezero crater, an ancient lake that may contain evidence of ancient microbial life. So to summarise, UAE's HOPE mission will get to Mars first on February the 9th, with Tianwen one joining it just a day later. Tianwen one won't be attempting a landing for just a few months yet, but you'll be able to catch Perseverance landing on February the 18th. I'll put the links to all of these in the description box below, so fingers crossed all goes well and you can watch it live. But you know, Mars is hard! Thank you so much for watching this week's video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.